Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Leading Change. My name is Emma, and I've got Cassidy with me today, and we're going to be talking about the organization that she runs, Women in Automation. Um, before we get started, one, I want to like call out the fact that we are twinning today, so way, way to go <laughs> us for making this episode so matchy-matchy, um, but then also I'm going to pass it off to you to do a quick introduction for everyone. Of course. Hello, everyone. My name is Cassidy Reed. I'm the founder of Women in Automation, and there's a lot of exciting events coming up, and I'm so excited to share it with uh, you guys and Emma today. Wonderful. So let's get started by just like kind of talking about like what was the catalyst for you starting Women in Automation and kind of some of the motivating factors for why you decided to take on this endeavor. Of course. Yeah. I founded Women in Automation out of a passionate desire to see more women thriving in this space uh, where they're often underrepresented. Initially, it started as a local networking event here in Austin, Texas, but we quickly realized that there was so much larger global appetite for change. And now we're not just a network, we're really a movement. Um, our core objectives are simple yet powerful. We aim to empower, support, and connect women in automation. We want to celebrate and create a safe place and collaborative environment where women can share experiences and learn from one another. Um, a study from World Economic Forum, I believe, uh, really highlights the stark reality where only 22% of AI professionals are women. And this statistic isn't just a number, it's really a call to action for us. We're here to change the narrative and together we can build more of a diverse and innovative industry, paving the way for the next generation of women leaders. Great. So I want to dive into maybe a little bit more of some of the challenges that maybe you've seen. I know we could probably like go back and forth and riff on what it means to be like women in male dominated industries a little bit, but I'd love to hear a little bit about some of those challenges and then maybe more importantly, where do we think that there are opportunities for us to, to reshape all of this? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, it, you're so right, Emma. We can <laughs> stay on this topic all day, but really women in automation face a myriad of challenges from gender discrimination to threat of job displacement due to the advancing technologies. In fact, 73% of women in tech have reported experiencing gender discrimination recently, which can create discouraging environments uh, additionally, with women making up 58% of the workers as high risk of losing their job to automation, it, it's evident that we really do have some serious work to do in this area, sorry, industry. <laughs> However, I believe the role of women in this industry uh, is really on the brink of transformation. As organizations are increasing, recognize the value of uh, diverse perspectives, I see women taking on more leadership roles in driving innovation in automation. We're not just participants, we're trailblazers. And if we can foster a culture of values and inclusion, we can unlock untapped potential. Uh, let's face it, diversity is essential for creativity and progress, and we're here to lead the charge. So let's take a look then like at the, the final thoughts for us as we're going through this and maybe diving into your personal experience and what you found in terms of like what helps you become more successful in like all of the different roles of automation. Um, and actually, you know, kind of maybe even thinking through like, what are those different roles? Because like, maybe some people are hearing this and thinking like, oh, okay, AI. So does that mean like just the developers? Like, are we hoping for women in development? Like what are some, before I get to the rest of the question, what are some of the, the, the different areas that you've seen women? I mean, your career wasn't in development. Mine wasn't in development. So what are some of the different things that I guess encompass this whole area of automation in your mind? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different roles that can be a part of automation, even from HR. You know, there's so many different various levels. You know, I think, you know, DevOps is obviously the huge rock stars, the technical architects, but you have people that are more on the strategy side of automation and understand the business needs and potential in the organization and where they should be implementing things. Or, you know, you have business analysts who understand processes better. And so they can work with an automation team to just enhance and increase the efficiencies within their organization. Really, to me, the list goes on and on for um, sales. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, HR, um, you know, there's just a whole host talent acquisition. 
you name it, uh, really AI and women in automation would touch all of it. Um, yeah. But and I really, just wanted to kind of touch on that. Question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, I just wanted to touch oh, on ahead. that idea I'll... because I think there's so many people that think like, oh, a career in technology is development when there's really all of these different areas that might be able to pull from skill sets that you have in an existing career path or from studying something. Like, again, like I went to school to be a teacher. You wouldn't be like, oh, well, that's like clearly a, a pipeline to tech sales. But so many of my skills are well like attributed to technology sales and served me incredibly well there and also allowed me to kind of stand out from other people mm -hmm. in the field because of that. So especially as we get to some of these questions in terms of like advice for people as they're trying to kind of like make their mark in the automation role, I wanted to make sure everyone had an idea of kind of like what we were talking about in scope of that. So now back to my official question, in terms of like what advice from your experience do you have for women that are considering a career in automation and like how can they get involved in women in automation? I think that's a great question. My advice is really simple. Do not wait for permission. Take your seat at the table. Automation is a field that is shaping itself and there's no better time to dive in. Uh, yes, the challenges are real, but so are the opportunities. Uh, get curious, keep learning, and more importantly, connect with others who are passionate about this field. Uh, you don't have to be an expert in this field to join it. You know, it's just such a new uh, industry and it's really an exciting time. Women in automation is a fantastic starting point. Uh, by joining our community to access networking events, workshops, and conferences where you can meet industry leaders and peers. We're all about breaking down barriers and creating more inclusive industry. So whether you're just starting out or looking to advance your career, there's a place for you and women in automation. And together we can create a more diverse, inclusive, and innovative future together. Great. I would add my little two cents. Don't feel like you have to do it exactly the way that men might be doing it. Because for me, that was a big challenge coming in and being like, I don't fit into this box. So like, do I need to try and like shape myself to fit into the box? Or can I like decide how to do this my own way? And it took me probably about five years to figure out the answer to that question. And it's that you don't have to do it exactly the same way. And that's the value of it. <laughs> I couldn't agree more, Emma, uh, you know, just off the cuff here. I started out, um, my degree was in strategic communication. So absolutely nothing to do with intelligent automation. Um, but, you know, just like everyone else, I thought it was so fascinating. Got in on the ground floor, you know, worked my way up. I was one of the fifth hires, uh, fifth hire in Genpak's intelligent automation consulting firm. Moved over to EPAM where I was, you know, uh, there the first year that they were starting out their intelligent automation practice. It's such a new industry. You can really dive in right now. There's no experts, really. The experts only have maybe eight to 10 years experience. So it's such a great industry to really get in on the ground floor. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to share this here, but in my opinion, I think women have such a cutting edge for intelligent automation and automation in general. Uh, women have such a great ability of multitasking and trying to find the greatest efficiency in everything we do, whether we're mothers or whether we're just hardworking individual women. Um, we're great at finding efficiencies and everything. And that's what automation is. It's finding those efficiencies, finding how things can work better. And so to me, I think this is the place women need to be playing. Uh, this is where we almost have an advantage in the workplace. And it's such a shame that we're underrepresented in this field where I think that we should be dominating, in my opinion. Yeah. So you've got an event coming up um, in November. Can you tell everybody a little bit about that? Yeah. Before we wrap up, I'm thrilled to share that Women in Automation is hosting what will undoubtedly be our biggest event of the year in New York City on November 13th. It's sponsored by FanDuel. And this event will feature a panel of some of the top voices in, in our industry discussing the future of automation and the crucial role that women play in shaping it. Um, Here's the exciting part. This event is exclusive to the top 60 women in automation. Um, this is any level of industry within automation, but we want to have some of the top voices there. We want to make sure that we have, obviously, the most impactful voices in the room. So if you're listening and you know of someone who you think should be there or you think you should be there yourself, 
don't miss this, this opportunity. Uh, we'll attach a link in the video where you can nominate someone or apply to attend yourself. Spots are limited, so please act fast. <laughs> this is more than just a networking event. It's a chance to be a part of a movement that is redefining the automation industry. We can't wait to see the impact that comes from bringing together such an incredible group of women. So let's make history together. Well, thank you so much for joining me for the conversation, Cassidy. And for anybody watching, if you're not already following her, make sure you make your way to her LinkedIn page, follow along as she continues to drive the growth of women in automation and kind of continue the discussion that we had today. Um, but thank you very much for joining me and for everybody for watching and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Leading Change. If you like what you saw, be sure to come back on a weekly basis and subscribe for more expert interviews focused on digital transformation, change management, and emerging technologies.